What is good, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy James, 59, and I'm coming at you with another build order once again. We're going to be taking a look at the Dravidians, but I'm actually going to be showing you a build that I don't think anybody's talked about, and I think it could be really impactful for actually not only Dravidians, but even the other civs. But this build is specifically in mind with the Dravidians. So we're going to be taking a look at it today right if you like these build orders you like what we're doing here exploring the new civilizations go ahead drop this video a like you have no idea actually how important that is for ensuring that this build order video actually gets sent out to people and that youtube will recommend it and i think that people are going to want to have this build order recommended the reason i do this of course is because i just want to put build orders out there help people play the game I really get a kick out of it when I see comments in the build order videos. People telling me like, hey, I use this Jimmy and I totally annihilated my opponent, right? That is why I'm here doing what I'm doing. And speaking of doing of that, right? This is gonna be a really interesting build here. Gonna be looking at the Dravidians and yes, right? So everybody thinks of the Dravidians as a men at arms archer sieve, right? And that is the really conventional way I think to play them. However, Right? Sometimes the matchup just doesn't allow it, and you may have to play them a little differently. I'm going to say a few words about this build before getting into it and showing you the actual build order. Is that I think this build is situational, but there definitely are situations where you might want to use it, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, the build is designed to get really early pressure on your opponent and take map control, right? This is a scouts into elephant archers build, right? So this is gonna be the first of its kind out there, right? Shout out Guinness, right? We're making waves out here. Now, I do think that Dravidians, most often you're gonna wanna play them men at arms into archers or maybe even archer rush. Usually thinking about scouts is not the thing that you necessarily want to do. However, there are times, right, when you may need it. And I think this matchup in particular is one of those, right? So in this game, we're playing Dravidians versus Britons, right? Now, here's why you may need to play a bit off meta for you to try to get the most advantage in the situation. Now, you can go, say, something like 20 pop men at arms, 20 pop archers or something like that with the Dravidians. The problem with a civ like Britons is that, well, they can kind of do that too, right? You can go 20 pop archer rush with them. Because the sheep bonus, you can get up to your men at arms a little bit earlier. And one of the problems with men at arms is that it tends to be countered by a straight archer rush. Since usually it is not rushing in that game, I like to call that an archer defense. But it's the same idea, right? So the best options for the Dravidians here, men at arms and archers, well, they're actually kind of countered by what is probably the best archer sieve in the game. And this becomes a real problem because this means in feudal age, it can be kind of hard to press your advantage. Um, we're actually gonna be making use of a lot of the Dravidian bonuses in this game. So that's one of the reasons why I think this is a pretty interesting, pretty strong build. And for that reason, right, you have to play it a bit differently because when you're up against Britons, they're a sieve that can probably do men at arms better than you and probably do archers better than you because yeah you're getting barracks technology it's a little bit cheaper for dravidians but it's that burden sheep bonus is so good in the early game and their archery ranges work faster so you got to play this a little differently and that's why i actually recommend here maybe going for scouts right and with the dravidians you can do a really gnarly 18 pop scout rush yes you heard it 18 pop you're gonna see it in this video now i will say just to keep in mind right I think that doing the build exactly the way I do it in this build order, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen right now. And you can pause this video if you want to write it down, or I'm going to leave it up while I talk here for a minute. The thing about you can see this build, we are on the Arabia that has the the rhinoceros, uh, rhinoceroses, rhinoceri, I don't even know, has the rhinoceros or elephant uh huntables um this build does work on an arabia generation that uses boar however it's a bit tighter in that build and so i think that this build is best used when you are 
you're going to go for the 18 pop, I think it's best used in this generation where you do have board and you do have elephant, just because it makes it a lot smoother. But you can do this build with the sort of regular boar, but I actually might recommend even going, say, to 19 pop. I don't think you're missing out on all that much. And again, you just want to make it a little smoother. So with all that being said, right, let's jump into this build. And uh, I'm going to talk about, actually, before I talk about that, I just want to take a look at some of the Dravidian bonuses we're going to be using so that you really see that we're getting everything out of the sieve. So this is going to be a Scouts and the Elephant Archers build. And you can see, right, that means that we're going to be using the Dravidian, that 200 wood that we're getting. We're going to be using that bonus. We're going to be using the Elephant Archer as a unit itself, right? And you can see that those Elephant Archers have the faster firing rate. You can see that the Skirmishers also have the faster firing rate. Skirmishers, I think, are a really important part of the Dravidian army. And I'll talk about that a bit more in a Feudal Age, how to incorporate them into this build, and particularly when to incorporate them into this build because that's something that you might want to i think you are going to want to add skirmishers at some point but i think it's more of a question of when and also thinking about the matchup so we're going to be using a lot of interesting Travidian bonuses here and so hey with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the build right so the build is the standard start on sheep right we're going to have six on sheep but you can see we are going to go to collect the boar a bit early in this build i think that it's pretty crucial that you lure in uh one of your deer or ibex or ostriches whatever zebras right you really need to it really helps you get that smoothness for the build and that's a pretty typical thing that you're doing anyways at the I think mid elo level people are getting so good at this game with all the build orders and guides and things out there and people watching the pro scene so uh, i don't think it's that it's that crazy to suggest to people lauren one deer to the town center uh, but that's really something you want to do to again just make the build be as smooth as possible and so you can see we take that deer there right and so now right okay what we're going to be doing right is that we want to get that instead of sending that bill immediately out to the wood line right we're going to put another one on the tc and eventually we're going to send a bill to go collect that first that first boar right and right so we're going to take that boar here and the next villager is going right we're going to put two on wood so we're going to have seven on food at this point and then two more on wood the reason i like to do it this way is one we want to get that food income getting in quick since we're going for a really fast time and also we're going to have six here at the town center that means we can easily just go ahead and garrison shoot the boar with minimal idle time in the tc and go ahead get that knocked out now we have two villagers on wood and now we're going to send two more villagers i believe it is to actually i'm not actually looking at the notes in the build right here two more villagers to the boar and eventually we're going to go out and get this uh you want to get this second boar. And so what we should have, right, is where's our scout? Where's that scout running around? Oh, he's running around there. Good. About to find those. Perfect. So that means in this build, right, we actually have, we're going to have the six sheep at the town center just kind of hanging out for a bit. And we're going to go ahead and collect that boar right now, right? And you can see, right, this right this uh, this 12th villager here is actually going to build a house go to berries but we're just going to keep sending vills from this point forward we're just going to keep sending them to the rhinoceros until we have all 17 vills in there and boom okay perfect perfect right and so this vill right you can see right now we actually have the wood to make this mill so we're going to go ahead put that down now we have our second building so we'll be able to actually click up to the next age and that'll be pretty good for us here. Now, what you want to do here with the setup, right? Again, um, you know, there's a little bit of setting up you want to do, right? This boar is going to eventually expire. So you want to get two sheep here in the in the town center. And we're going to go ahead, right? Once this boar becomes a bit crowded, we want to go ahead and put some sheep around here. And then we're going to take these boar when they finish up this sheep right we're going to go ahead and assign them to there and then you want to get the other sheep pretty close by so these villagers are already ready to go to that sheep and these villagers 
right they're gonna go there and you can see right we have loom and well we have the resources to click up a little bit i actually misclicked there that's why there's that little five seconds but you could see that we had the food right so i just misclicked some things because my finger slipped and so sometimes it happens a little five seconds of out of time not a big deal okay so actually right there's a lot of moving parts here as well and so it's worth actually taking a moment to pause so right you can see we're gonna have a really fast uptime here and you want to get five on this first lumber camp and then what you want to do you want to get four on berries here and then you want to put three vills on straggler trees right so the ordering is pretty important here right so what we're going to do is we're going to get that barracks up right that's what we're going to so we're just going to you know do everything as normal right i'm going to go ahead and kind of keep this going right we're going to get a barracks up as normal because again we're just playing a normal scout build at some point in this build we're going to send we're going to have the wood to make a second lumber camp and we'll send those guys to do that here and that'll be really helpful for us and so that way we're going to have a really efficient economy and you can see here right we're scouting things out again so you always want to think about your opponent's strategy right i'm scouting around i'm looking at things and in fact let's just go ahead right see what i see I don't really see anything on the front of his base yet. And that's kind of what I'm waiting for because I, at this point, don't know if he wants to go men at arms or not. And so I'm not really seeing anything yet. Um, I actually haven't scouted that gold just yet, but I do see his berries. I do see his wood line here. And so, right, we're just going to go ahead, right? Scoop in there just a little bit, right? And see, we're almost up the next stage. And... All right, we're just taking a look. Okay, this is perfect, right? Let's take a pause here, right? What we see here is I know that he is has just getting that gold mining camp up. So because he's just getting it up, then I actually know at this point that he isn't going men at arms. This is a lot of information. If he was going men at arms, this mining camp would actually be up by now. So I know that we're dealing with an archer rush, okay? Let's go ahead and start this video again. I'll take us out of the fog of war, right? And so, back home, what we're doing, right? We're going ahead because the Dravidian wood bonus, right? We have enough wood to get this stable up. We have wood for a house, right? We have wood to get double bid axe, and we'll be able to get horse collar too. So, you're not sacrificing any eco upgrades with this build, actually, right? You're not sacrificing anything, and we can see our opponent, right? He was going for that 20 pop archers, right? Pretty good build from him, too. He's going, again, he's probably anticipating the men-at-arms, right? Being a little silly with the uh, the scout here, right? Kind of causing some issues for our opponent. Um, trying to keep him from getting this range up. This is really annoying, but it's actually really important. We're forcing him to push this range back. It's going to be a bit more difficult for him to move out. Now, why is this important? The reason that it's important is because we want to keep him playing defensive keep him at his base we want to try and take map control with these scouts and so that's what we're trying to do here and you can see also as well right we have our scouts being queued up right um you know a little bit of inefficiencies here in the build for me right so we have the food to click up and it takes me a few seconds to get there i will always stress i am a you know 1300 ish player right somewhere in the mid 13s is where i normally hang out sometimes i like to play cheesy meme build orders and lose a couple hundred elo you guys know how it goes right so again this is kind of mid you know kind of in the mid elo ish sort of gameplay setting um so don't take my imperfections as necessarily indicative of the build uh if you actually watch you'll see that we usually have the resources there um but of course you know keep in mind right this is what you're seeing you will see some imperfections but here right the idle tc time right we're still under a minute so with as much fighting as what's going on we're actually doing pretty good now we're taking map control here so we're keeping all the action in the front of his base right because we're trying to see if he's going to move out we see a spearman right there boom we catch the archer click on the archers you always want to do that to see if they have fletching yet and what we're doing is we're just trying to get walled up at home and we're what we're doing is we're using the scouts we're trying to find some we're trying to find some room to get in and we could go all the way around to this side however 
look, here's the thing. We've only got three scouts. Some of them are damaged. These scouts are actually better used for getting information, right? Because again, we're not walled up yet, right? We're trying to get there, but we're not walled up. And so if we know where he is, then we can track his army. And let me actually take a pause. So remember, we're playing this scouts and elephant archers, right? Again, you got to think about what's coming up next. We have scouts. He's going to have spears in his base. And with scouts, right, what you're often doing is you're very rarely with scouts are you actually ending a game in feudal age because you kill so many villagers. Why? Because scouts are so easily countered by spearmen. With most civs, you are playing to try to get to knights in castle age. You get up earlier, you take advantage of that opportunity, and you kill your opponent. However, with Travidians, right, you have probably the worst stable in the game. Basically, everything is missing, which is one of the reasons why Scouts is such an unorthodox play from them. Now, we're going Scouts into Skirmishers here. Well, actually, let me take that back, right? We're going to put up a range in case we need Skirmishers. What we want to get to is Elephant Archers, right? And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there and how to play that. But... We're going to get this range up because in case we need skirms, one of the advantages that Dravidians have is their skirmishers fire 25% faster, right? So you have actually a pretty decent, right, scout skirm army combination in feudal age, right? Because normally you don't have, you don't research bloodlines on your scouts till later. You can't really go all in with your scouts with Dravidians because you are missing bloodlines. So your scouts are a bit weak, but your skirmishers are actually really strong in Feudal Age. And what you want to do with your scouts here is we don't want to go too far off because if our opponent starts going forward, we're not going to know about it. And we don't know if we need to make skirmishers in Feudal Age or Castle Age. And I do think it's important to make skirmishers in Castle Age, even when you are going Elephant Archers. Um, it's not something you have to do. But depending on the matchup, it might be something that you want to do. I think against Britons, you want to do it. But again, I'll talk about that when we get a bit closer. Um, but you can see here, right, we're going to get this range up just in case we need to make skirmishers. And you can see, right, we already have our blacksmith up. So if our opponent does go forward, right, as we're getting this base walled up, and we, should, we will be able, right, to go in make those awesome Dravidian skirmishers and have ourselves defended. But you might want to wait to do that because if you don't need to, why invest the food? Get up to Castle Age faster. So that's what you're thinking about at this stage in the game is whether or not you need skirmishers, but you're going to want the range, right? You, we have the wood, so let's go ahead and get the range up. And here's what we're doing, right? We're just keeping them on the front of the space. We know his army is there, right? This is really important. Because we're keeping this army there. He could go forward and we have to track his army, right? We don't want to fight him here, right? We're just trying to see if we can keep him at home. And if we can actually do a little bit of raiding. We know that there's a lot, right? There's a lot there. And now, right? This is really important, right? This is actually... I'm going to pause here too. Because again, there's a lot of strategy and psychology actually going on here. We want to move in front of his base so that he can see us right we actually want to be seen here why because what we're hoping is that he will send his military back to his base because if his military is back in his base it's not going forward right so really what we're trying to do here because again he has this this area walled off we're not getting in there anyways he's probably thinking he's catching us right and you know in in, in a way he is um and we do take a little bit of archer fire, right? This is fine. This is actually really good because now, right? We know his army is back here. His army is not going forward, right? Not going forward. And again, we want to come back up here, right? Get vision. See if maybe we can, what we're trying to do here, check, check to make sure, right? We're checking to make sure that this hasn't been opened up because if it has, that might mean that there are archers going forward and we need to go back and track them right and so right we're just checking to see if that happened we're going to go around right see if there's anything going on there he's getting he's getting walled up he's actually going back here um but again i don't want to go too far in the back of the space because 
I want to catch any army so that I know if we need to make skirmishers or not. We can, but hey, if we don't need to, why spend the resources? We want to get up quickly. Now, in this build, what we're doing here, right, is now what we do, we have we, we have a good number of farms. Like we have 14 farms, and we're trying to get to 7 gold here. I really advise going ahead and getting wheelbarrow, right? Um, because that way you have such better worker efficiency, and elephant archers are quite expensive. So I definitely recommend it. Um, I think it's a good play. And again, if you're walled up, right, we can play defense. If our opponent was going knights here, you know, we'd be walled up. We could play defense too. Uh, it'd be a bit different game. We probably wouldn't see archers here. But um, I think this is a really nice build when you're dealing with archers. And look, right, we right, if we go down here, right, look, our idle time still the same as it was earlier, right? I don't know how I got it from the screen, right? So we've been able to keep our town center running really smoothly with this build very little very little idle time and we've even picked up a couple of ill kills that's good damage folks it's really good damage and our opponent making a really really awkward archery range he's probably worried about us attacking through here and isn't trying to move troops but again this is great right right when we when we go in right we 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 should know the archery range is there. Yeah, we saw it being built there, so we, we don't even need to go back and take a look at it. And boom, right? We're on the way up to the next stage, right? Our opponent, he's going to be up at a pretty similar time. I got to say, really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm so impressed. I feel like even like a year ago, um, playing this game, I felt like there was a lot more idle time that everybody was having. People's builds are so crisp now. Um, it's, it's tough to play with, but, uh, but it's kind of tricky. Um, so, okay. So here's what we're doing, right? We go back to the base right we have a healthy amount of villagers on gold we're getting fletching we're getting our eco upgrades we're going to be getting plus one armor and what i want to do right here right is i'm just going to get a house up here on this uh this this hill and it's going to be a little bit actually this is a mistake actually attacking this house because i don't want to draw any troops out actually and i'm keeping my scouts in front of this of the base because i want to see if any army comes out because we sent this vill forward in retrospect i think i would have sent this villager out a little bit later than we did um but right now just trying to find his army boom this is perfect his army's here great i know that this villager isn't in danger now that's what i'm really trying to figure out because what we want to do with this scouts and elephant archers i think it's very important to go all in with a build like this elephant archers are very expensive you're going to be spending a lot of food so it's going to be a little while before you can get down that next tc and elephant archers are a really cool unit in fact let me pause right actually you know what? let's get into let's get into the game a little bit so i can click on one of these bad boys and show you their stats as we're queuing them up we're getting all kinds of eco upgrades here we're getting wood we're getting bodkin arrow right I should be getting the farming upgrade because, again, our farms are going to expire in a couple minutes and we're going to want to keep reseeding those. So at some point we get the farming upgrade. Um, not sure. or may Actually, maybe I don't get it this game. I'm trying to remember. Um, you should get the farming upgrade. I would definitely recommend it uh, if you... Um, because, again, you're going to want that food. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're getting, right, our siege workshop up... Uh, this is going to come very, very close to being denied. He sees this. We go, we go, we go, we go. Okay, boom, perfect. All right. Now, let's actually take a pause here. So, here we have our beautiful, beautiful elephant archer, right? So, you remember, Dravidians don't get bloodlines, don't get husbandry. So, these guys are going to be a little bit slow. But, as a civ bonus, they already fire 25% faster. So, you're going to have great DPS. You can also get thumb ring. The civ has it. So you can have just machine gun elephant archers if you need it. I can't remember if we get there in this game. Again, sometimes you got to prioritize this and that. What you really want here is the siege to go along with your elephant archer, right? So, because remember, you got to you gotta think of this matchup here, right? Britain crossbows have three range. He's got bod canero. This is a guy that he can... If we have skirms, he's going to be able to micro out distance them. If we go straight mangonels or something, then he's going to be able to micro down mangonels because he has that extra range if he's really paying attention. So what we want to do with this build here, we when we have this really chonky elephant archer guy, still got 
230 HP, right? We're going to want to make sure we get the second armor. And and they start off with two base pierce armor anyways, so they can absorb a lot of damage. And so what we really want with these guys is these, it's a damage sponge that also can dish out a little bit of damage as well, right? We don't really want to be fighting all of these crossbows head on necessarily. What we do want to be able to do is have a damage sponge so that we can always go forward and force the crossbow player to be retreating back and microing back. So you'll take a look, right? Again, this is just something that I'm thinking about really at the moment is thinking about how, right, we, we micro these units, how we use these units to make them most effective. And so again, right, not really going forward, trying to catch him out here. Ooh, we see him there. Boom. That's a place where we can get some damage because he's right. He's kind of in the way there. We actually don't get any kills right there. Um, he's got hit plus one armor. And again, we don't really want to fight here. Uh, I'd actually forgotten about those scouts and what we're trying to do. He wants to go forward, but we're just trying to cut him off, right? We're just trying to cut him off here. Stay on him, right? Um, so what's funny? The elephant archers are not all that accurate before you get thumb ring and okay. Here's what we do, right? We've got two mangonels at this point in the game up against Britons. I really want to add skirms and get that plus two armor because I want to keep these expensive guys alive, first of all, but I want that trash unit that can really, right, have a little bit more range, right? And paired with the mangonels, right? We have damage sponges that can stay ahead of them. One of the really, really nice things about having about having the elephant archers is that they can absorb a mango shot and still have the dps right to dish out damage this is really important actually because you know dodging mangonels is a is well that's a professional hazard of of you know your crossbows and so again getting a nice shot there right he's going to try to make knights but again this is where having these dravidian right faster following elephant archers we just wreck those knights right He's trying to make nice to get out there, but again, no bloodlines, no armor. Um, you know, he actually has quite a bit of resources. He could get armor here, but again, he's going to get barely a hit or two on those mangonels, right? And, you know, he's not investing in that armor, right? And he's got some decent resources here, you know, banked up. He could, but hey, you know, this is, uh, you know, this game, right? He's probably never seen this unit before, and so you may be even wondering what the heck is going on here. Now that we have the skirmishers in, right, and we have plus two armor on everything, so we're not taking hardly any damage, and now we can just keep moving forward. I don't know why we're attacking that farm, but we can just keep moving forward here. Let's look at those crossbows, right? All right. And now what we're going to do, right, again, we want to take that reinforcement distance again, we're going all in. You can see we haven't got another TC up at home, right? And we're just, you know, controlling the front of his base. We're getting these archers in. All right, we're going to put a TC up now. Again, thinking about getting some stone, having some wood, you know, protecting ourselves a little bit. And we're just keeping him right on the front of that base, right? And trying to make sure that we can control the game as much as possible. Again, he can't really fight this army, not only with the skirms there... What we're doing with the skirms here, right, is we're maneuvering the skirms, again, trying to hunt down some of these crossbows. With the skirms in place, right, if we just chase down crossbows, that means that we can move forward with the rest of it, this army without getting sniped here, right? And you can see he's got a really juicy area here. I don't think that we... Right, we don't really know what's going on in this area just yet, but we do know that there were things earlier, right? And so... Eventually, we're going to go in and actually check this out. And again, right, we see a little siege, right, a little armored elephant. Again, why are we doing this? Well, look, we've got the food, and there's a stable here. At this point, I didn't know if he was queuing up more knights, so I wanted to be careful about that, and that monk's going to go down. I mean, there's Trafidian skirmishers fire so fast. Now we see, right, the mother load here, and okay, right? So we're just going to go ahead. Right, we're gonna go ahead, right? And there's a lot of vills here. We're really putting the pressure on now. And again, he's trying to get to the right comp, but we're putting a lot of pressure on this town center, a lot of pressure on this base, right? 
He has that monk there. We're attacking him with the elephant archer. He actually converts one of these bad boys. Um, but, uh... Right, but we have the skirms actually to deal with that if we need to. And, you know, we can also attack it ourselves. And, as you can see, right, we're getting a lot of damage done. We're causing a lot of, a lot of idle eco time. And our opponent, right, decides to just wilt under the pressure at this point, right? So, uh, you know... Again, right, this was a really interesting game. And again, this is a bad matchup for the Dravidians in theory, right? Um, I mentioned from, you know, there's, I mentioned at the beginning of the game, right? Civs like this are really tough. Uh, another civ that might be tough in the same matchup maybe is something like Ethiopians, where you have the faster firing feudal archers, but then you got to go up against the faster firing skirms of the, of the Dravidians. I don't know. That might be kind of a push, but still real it's still a really difficult matchup um and you know with dravidians right you you might want to think about alternatives to that and so this is one way to play it um i think that you could probably take this same build maybe not do it as fast with the other civs because again we went 18 pop scouts here and we were on our opponent with three scouts very quickly but you could probably take the same concept and 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 use it and maybe you could play Gurjaras. I think I've seen somewhere things like 19 pop uh, scouts or 19 pop camel scouts. I think that build is out there. There's no reason you can't do the same thing here with with Gujaras. Um Bengalis, you probably have to play your Dark Age a bit more standard, but you are gonna be getting the two builds when you do get up. So again, um, you might you might be able to play something like 20 pop scouts into this with Bengalis. Um, there's no reason, right? 19 pop scouts, I think, is still really achievable with this. And even doing 20 is fine, too. Um, you might just, you know, change the wood up a little bit. But being able to go 18 pop scouts, not a lot of civs can do that. And we were able to do it in this video and and not have a lot of idle eco time there in, in Feudal Age. So, right? The Elephant Archer is a really interesting unit. Uh, the problem with the Elephant Archer is that it really just dies to Skirmishers pretty hard, which is one of the reasons why I think you either need your own Skirmishers, and when you're Dravidians, your Skirmishers are going to do better than your opponent's Skirmishers, right? Because they fire faster. Or, and, or slash and also having Forward Siege, right? Because that way, I mean, when you're up against a non-Britain player, I think that Forward Siege is really helpful because you have the elephant archers it's pretty hard for your opponent to go forward siege on you because elephant archers can you know can tank mangonels and do pretty well even against scorpions i think too but you also want it right so that that way right you can use your mangonels on them so it's actually a pretty nice advantage and again i think dravidians are a really interesting civilization uh you know we saw them here you know, using these fast, these high DPS elephant archers to a pretty high effect here, and we we're able to tank a lot of damage and and dish out a lot of damage, right, and keep the pressure on. So, you know, against these uh, difficult civs like Britons, right, uh, this is a build you can use. Uh, it's worked for me. I've actually used this build against a Britons player, uh, you know, I think a day or two ago, and that's kind of where I came up with this, and so it worked there as well. So. Um, you know, this is a build that's not bad, and it can probably be improved upon. I encourage anybody out there to uh, to improve upon this build, right? If you have any suggestions, uh, drop them in the comment section below. But with that, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this video. I really hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you get something out about this as we start figuring out these new civilizations and what they're all about. But with that, right, I'm Jim James 59 and I'll see you out in the ladder. Peace.